Hello and welcome back everyone! Today I want to show you how you can create some cool renders without much effort. And as a starting point I will use the stylized mine which I created a time-lapse videos from already a while ago. Many of you asked me about this so here we go. Uh, if you want to follow along I uploaded the blend file to the website where I'm also uploading the textures. There's a link in the description for that so you can just easily follow. Um, so uh, that's about it so let's dive right into it. If you open up the scene, you will see that the light and the camera are still the default fonts from when you create a scene. And if you render the result, it doesn't look like much. So the first thing we want to do is, or want to work on, is the lighting. All right, first of all, we're going to use the default lamp and change it to sun. So select it, go into the lamp settings and change it into sun and reduce its strength. So it's more of a directional ambient light, if that makes sense. Next, uh, position it in front of the scene and rotate it so it's lighting towards it. I'm working here mostly from the top view, but also make sure to check side and front view when positioning the lights. Additionally to that, we want to add two area lights, both lighting from the back. This will often make scenes more interesting and giving a better distinction to the background. So for the first one, I just went with the white light, that is kind of the default white, and the second one I used the light blue. And last but not least, we want one point light inside the lamp with a nice yellow orangey color. I'm not going to go over all the exact values I chose here, so um, if you really want to follow along with the exact values, you can just pause the video whenever you want and then check them in the inspector. For all of this, it's also nice changing the shading into rendered. This will make it easy to see changes directly and with Eevee as rendering engine, your computer should also not directly fly away. Uh, at least I hope so. Okay, um, lights are done, so next up is setting up the camera. So when working with the camera, I like to work in a split view. So the left side I normally use in the top view, which is 7 on the numpad, and the right side I'm using to actually show the camera view, which you can access by pressing 0 on the numpad. And then it's just a matter of moving and rotating the camera around until you get the scene in a nice frame. Um, I'm pretty sure Blender Guru made a nice video about ratio and everything, like where you can learn the best way to position your camera. So I'm not going to go into that. So summarize really short, try to not have your scene directly in the center, at least in most of the cases. So in this case, I decided to view it from the side front, so not directly front, but also not completely side, kind of like, I don't know, 45 degrees in the middle. Um, and having the mine more to the left of the final render, so also not completely centered, but more concentrated to the left side. So for lights and camera, try to just get the main idea down and don't get lost in details because you can always reposition them later on. Now merging both view into one again, we already reached step three, which is just about creating a ground plane. I added that plane to get some more shadows out of the scene, so I thought that would make it more interesting. So instead of directly placing it at the bottom of the other objects, I moved it a bit down on the side axis so um, the mine is basically floating above it. And then of course scaling it up a lot so we don't see it at its edges on the rudder. And next is setting up the materials. So which is pretty easy for this scene. I generally like to switch into the shading tab when working with materials and then you will normally already have one material which is a BSDF shader. So I renamed, renamed that material to all objects and added it to literally all the objects except the ground plane. If you're wondering now if there's a way to assign one material to multiple objects at once, I'm wondering about the same. So maybe there is, I have no idea about it. If you know it, feel free to write a small comment about it. Anyways, after all the objects have that one material, create a new material for the ground plane and leave it also as a BSDF shader. Next up, we are going to tweak some of the values for both of these shaders. So we're going to start with the one for the all objects where I change the base color um, to a light gray and the subsurface value to 0.04. Then I also decrease the specular value and set the roughness to one. For the ground material, I set the color to black, so completely black, and the subsurface value to, again, 0.05 this time, um, and also increasing the roughness a bit. Um, with these values, basically just play a little bit around. I mean, I chose this one, but I'm sure some others might also work. So just see what, what you prefer. Now, we're still working on the materials. We just need one more material for the lamp, which is for the scene kind of the most important and interesting part. 
we'll use the BSDF shader for the lamp and then we're going to add a second material that's kind of an emission shader for the glass part. So to do this, select the lamp and add a second material in the material tab by clicking on the little plus. Then click on new to create a new material and change it to an emission shader. Here again, I set the color to a bright yellow, similar to the color of the point lights and then increase the strength. Now we just need to assign it to the correct faces of the lamp. So with the lamp selected, change into edit mode and use the face selection mode to select the four faces that are kind of the glass of the lamp. Then with the second material selected in the list of those materials, click on the assign button below the list. And now in rendering preview, you can still adjust the strength of the mission a bit of if you want. So you should now be able to see kind of that the glasses are also emitting light. We could leave the scene now as it is or add a little bit more detail and add those small fireflies around the lamp. To do so, create a vertex group of the same faces of the lamp that have the emission shader. So change into the object data properties tab and click on the plus to create a new vertex group. In edit mode, select again the four faces of the lamp and then with the vertex group selected, click assign. Same what we did with the materials. This vertex group is where we want the fly fireflies now to spawn. Okay, then go into the particle properties and click on the plus again to add a particle system to the lamp. There's now at the bottom a header called vertex groups and if you unfold it, you can add the vertex group we just created to the density field. Next up, create a small icosphere, which is going to be one of our fireflies and scale it down so it's super small. Still in the particle settings of the lamp, unfold the render header and then change the render as value to object. Now below, set the instance object to the icosphere you just created and change the scale randomness to one if you don't want them all to be exactly the same size. Now select the icosphere again and create a new material for it. Change the BSDF shader to an emission shader and add a new particle info node, which you can find under input. Create another node, this time a divide node, which you can create by creating a math node and then change its mode to divide. Let's create also a color ramp node, which you can find under converter and connect the age and the lifetime of the particle info to the divide node and use the output um, of that node as an input for the color ramp. Now, set the left value of the color ramp to a nice bright yellow or something, and then right one to a bit darker orange and connect the output to the emission shader input. This way, our fireflies should spawn like a bright yellow and get more orange the older they get and further away they get from the lamp. If you want to get a better explanation of these notes, I will add a link in the description where Blender Guru explains this uh, very well. Now, we only need to change some settings in the particle system of the lamp and we're all set. So select the lamp again and change into the particle tab. Before you want to change any of these settings, just let the animation run once just to see what needs to be changed. You should already see particles flying around, but probably way too fast and kind of falling to the ground. In the physics tab, leave the type as Newtonian and set the mass to 0.01 kilogram or something kind of low. For the forces, set the Brownian to 10 and the drag to 0.2. If you now run the simulation, the dead should fly more horizontally. Now, under the velocity tab, set the normal to 0.01 meter per second. And if you want, you can also change the start and the end frame at the top, same like the lifetime and the lifetime randomness. But you can also change those values a little bit later on when you actually see how your animation is going. As a final change, under the physics header, under integration, change the timestamp to 0.001. I think that's the smallest value that you can actually change that to. And you should have a lot of slowly spreading fireflies now if you play it. Now you can simply play around with the lifetime and amount until you're happy. If you want to do a test render, you just set the current frame to somewhere in the middle of the timeline and then press F12 to render just to take a look. Won't you take me home? So far, we always use the EV rendering engine to render the scene. 
that is to totally fine, especially when you still work with the lights and setting everything up. But to get a bit different rendering results, we will use cycles. First of all, change the rendering engine to cycles. Now, my computer is by far not the best, so before I do the super best render, I do some test renders in a lower quality just to save some time. And as soon as I got all the settings nicely up, I create one render with a very high quality. Uh, if you have a really good computer, by all means, just go ahead. Um, I'll, I will change some settings. Okay, to render the scene a bit faster in cycles, I just divide the resolution of the output by two. So just creating a smaller image. This should give you a really grainy and small picture, but perfect for us to tweak some final settings. So go into the composition tab, which you can find at the top between rendering and scripting, and at the menu bar directly below, enable use notes. You can create here all different kinds of notes, same way you create notes for the materials. So just press Shift A, go to Output and select Viewer. If you now connect the image output from the render layers node to the image input of the newly created viewer node, you will see your rendered image in the background. This makes it easier working with the nodes because you will directly see how they affect your final render. Um, if it does not show up, just press F12 once so it does render it and then it should show up. You can do a lot of different things here with the final render, like changing the contrast or brightness or general stuff you can also do in an image editing program. For this scene, I decided to just add a glare node, which you can find under filter. Put the glare node in between the nodes and you will see that all the bright spots get a glare. Instead of streaks, I went with a fog glow, but there are a couple more that you can just try out. The fog glow is basically the same like bloom in Eevee. Also set it to high, the mix to 0.5, the threshold to 0.85, and the size to 7. You can always play around with these values more and then just see how they affect the final render and what you prefer. If you're happy with the result you can see in the preview, we can create our final render without all the noise and with a better resolution. We can do this really quickly by first of all enabling denoising for the render under the header sampling. This should give you a better result, but you might have now some bigger areas of noise. To reduce that, double the sampling size for the render. I went from 128 to 256, which gave me good results. If you want to reduce the noise further, just increase that value. But make sure your computer is not going to fly away when you start rendering. With that all set, change the resolution of the output image to something higher to get a good quality image and let your computer start working. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. If there are any questions or suggestions, just let me know in the comments. Yeah.